Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm Victor Dandridge, the hardest working man in comics. Ryan Seymour, king of Comic Town in Columbus, Ohio. Oh yeah, buddy! And we have got some goodness some for crazy you. Crazy goodness this I week. don't even understand, like, who is who is feeding this creative energy? There is so much. I don't know. It's nuts. Right? And we've got like a, okay, we've got some that are the same, but mm -hmm. like the the range of storytelling and, and characters and titles. Yeah. Ridiculous. All ages to... I don't. I don't know that I even should have read it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm old enough to look yeah. at this. Yeah, like and everything, like everything. Scout. Yes. Aftershock. Behemoth. Boom. Behemoth. Yes. yes. Like all. Everybody. Everybody is is winning. Um, okay. So honorable mention wise, we yes. only have one that's the same. Yes, that is very true. So where do you want to start? Oh, see. All right. Because you also did a. I, I did a behemoth book. We'll get you to did. it. But you did 2021 shot. Yes. So. <clears throat> this book, uh, 2021 shot uh, by Nicholas Brondo, story and art. Uh, Luciana Dolphy did the letters. Um, let me just, okay, so here's a quote on the front end side cover. Mm -hmm. uh, Valen, I leave you a forgotten and devastated world. It's up to you to do what I couldn't do. Hmm. Right? Like, sounds amazing. Yeah. You open this up and it looks very manga esque. Yeah, I was gonna say I got like an Akira vibe. Very much so. Um, uh, how do I put this into words? We have. Ugh. <laughs> That's the best part. Yes, that is the answer. Oh. The sound of uh, ugh, that <laughs> Ryan exploded with. Um, okay, so here we go. This is probably the greatest. Comic book in a in a day, twenty four hour comic, whatever project. Um, not to say that like quality wise, that it it looks like it took like a very short amount of time, yeah. but it looks so very like thought process, like just get, just go, just create, yeah. just make it happen. Um, I have no idea the backstory behind this, mm -hmm. other than it's amazing from a creative standpoint. It looks beautiful. It it story wise is. Yes, but if this is something that they are supporting of just having people create content and put it out there, that's that's dope. Yeah. It's dope. It looks good. It's fun. It's interesting. This is not necessarily going to be like, you know, oh, what sort of literature can comic books be? Don't slide them this. That's not the, <laughs> that's that's not, not that's the not answer. Don't do that one. Um, this is more like, you know what? I wanted to do something a little crazy, and I did it. And there you go. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. All righty. Uh, we're going to go with these children first. <laughs> From Source Point Press. Yes. Damned, cursed children. Uh, Howard Wong, uh, Josh Stafford, Robin Simon Ng. So this totally mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. like when I think it was Avatar Press had Night of the Living Dead and uh, like the horrors. This is that. So it's all in black and white. So it's got that homage to Night of Living Dead. It is, in this particular world, kids become zombified. What do you mean they become? That's what they are. All they do is they eat. Right? Just. Right. Because I've had like four toddlers in my house. And they're, they're all my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If the fans is listening, <laughs> yeah. I mean, kids. all of them. Genetically. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, like, it, yeah, it's they become these mindless no, good, man. cannibal. Yeah. The art is just amazing. It's <sighs> It really has this sort of, like, it, I don't, I get the vibe that it was never intended to be in color. Right. Like, right out of the get-go, the, the, the art team decided to go this Strong route. Strong black and whites, like clean lines. Yeah. And it's it is good. so, uh Yeah, it's just like kids. It's very Michael Golden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if you're looking for something something zombie-esque, something cannibal-esque, uh, elementary school kids in this world, get that, and they go. Yeah, I really, really dug it. That's um, awesome. Plus, anytime you get to kick a kid in the face. <laughs> not that that's a goal. Not that, not or, or that it's ever happened. That's... Yes. Not that that's... <laughs> don't complain you don't have lemonade if life doesn't give you lemons. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of life giving lemons, uh, Fantastic Four number 28, Marvel Comics. Um, creative team on this one. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure I give this 
all the gold and love that it needs. Dan Slott is the writer. Uh, R.B. Silva is the artist. Jesus Ar- Arbutov. Arbutov? I hope Abutov? Abutov? I'm mm-hmm. screwing that up. I apologize. Um, did the colors. Okay, so this one is the end result of um, this Forevergate saga. Yeah. Um, we've got a return of a, of the character of the Griever um, in issues past. You saw that. Um, wanting this Forevergate thing that will give access to all points in time. Um, there are some there are some hitters that appear in yes. this. Um, beautifully rendered. Oh my goodness. Hey Seuss, like I don't even I don't even know what magic you found, but keep slinging it. Um, and RB of course is, is an amazing illustrator, but the colors yeah. add something so magical. Um, let me be let me be like straight up honest here. This ends the threat and I don't like it. Really? Like the answer is so okay. Like it's it's one of those things yeah. where I'm like, why did it take so long to get to this point? Like what? Yeah. Wait, what? What? Like why? Did, like I hope that in subsequent issues it is revealed to be a far more significant feat than what this showed. Because hmm. as this ends, I go, okay, so what's the what's the the gag? What's the twist? And it's just like, and that's the end of the book. And I'm like. That was it. Like that's what we. All right, all right. I mean, okay. If that's what you want to be doing when, you know, Fantastic Four turned sixty, I don't, I don't know. But okay, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. I'm just, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> all right, from Scoot, which is Scout Comics All Ages in Print. Yes, Loot Number One. All righty, so. It is the story mm-hmm. of this young lady who uh, was bouncing around in the foster care system. Mm-hmm. Uh, she considered herself a treasure hunter. Okay. Uh, which That's adorable. Which basically meant she stole stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Context, man. It, yeah. I mean. She was going to start a museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, yeah, at yeah. one point. At her house. And so eventually she gets adopted and finds her forever home with a police officer. Okay. Uh, who eventually retires. Because they, they stay together and they're working for huge mart which is kind of like your walmart okay uh, but they're doing loss prevention gotcha but on the side she is still doing like it, on the online treasure hunt community mm-hmm. like just different different stuff and she is convinced that she has found a map to a secret missing gold in south oh. america and it is so fresh the the, the I, one of the things i hate about gilmore girls right is that wait, the, the, wait. It, 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 <laughs> that's a that's a sentence that you will probably only hear on this show. One of the things <laughs> I hate about Gilmore. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> don't don't worry. It's, 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 I'm going to take you to Mordor, but okay. you can end back in the Shire. It's cool. <laughs> so, one of the things the dialogue right. is too snappy. Oh, it's too. Right. This is down from that. An, okay, a, a, a notch or two on the dial, mm-hmm. and it really, really, really works for that's me. Awesome. Uh, the, you can tell how smart the characters are. Right. You can tell how well they think on their feet. Mm-hmm. And it is so well done. Uh, it is something I would I would give to see, probably my second oldest daughter. Okay. okay. So you know something tweenish. Got you. In in the vibe, but it's it's really cool. It's really fun, and support all ages stuff. It's dollar ninety nine yeah. instead of three ninety nine. Oh, that's right there. Can't go wrong. Um, I'm going to give another extra shout out on that one. Kaylin Smith is the artist, and we need more female artists to get their love, their accolades. And she is amazing, yeah. like, in general, but she's also a, a Midwest creator. I think she's in, in Michigan. Oh, so, okay. Um, shout out to Kaylin because you're awesome. Yep. Um, okay. <sighs> this was a tough one to not it have in the acrylic. was. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you said it. Okay, Something is Killing the Children, Issue 14, James Tinian IV, uh, Werther de la Dera, Miguel, Miguel Merto. Um, <clears throat> I, the heartstrings that this yeah. tugs on um, are deep, they're long, just rich. Um, the story, okay, we know that they're monsters. We know that they are the things that are killing the children. Mm-hmm. There are new monsters, yeah. right, that are looming. And we're not talking about the ethereal, you know, fictional kind. Yeah. We're talking those that look like us. The dude has an axe. 
<laughs> and it looks sharp. It looks clean. It looks very clean. I don't trust anybody with a clean axe. No, no, because they, they have not used it before. Or, or, <laughs> or they have. <laughs> or they have in a way that that is cleanable. Let's just say that when you have an axe for, like, woodwork. Yeah. It's not going to look clean. Yeah. Right? Like, it's going to have nicks mm -hmm. and, and shards of it missing because yeah. you, yeah, the thing that you're cutting is, is thick and tough. But when it's a clean axe... Well, yeah, and the dude's wearing a suit. That's let you know right there, like people getting chopped. Yeah, he, he, and we're we're not talking about kitchen nightmare either. Like this is about to go bad. Um, can we talk about how badass Erica is, though? Erica, can we? Erica is amazing because she's got two things going on in this issue yes. that I absolutely love. All right, so she's got the one where it's very cerebral. Yes, it hits you in the feels as you're like figuring out what's going on. Yes, and then the other thing is just how she get her last name. Oh my god, because it's violent. Oh my god, listen, Werther, your your portrayal of of her rage, like the, in the eyes. Yeah, is so like I I yeah. can hear this picture. Yeah, like I can hear it. Yeah. Like. Yes. Oh, that one. Too. Oh my! That one needs to be on a T-shirt. Yeah. And it's just, and it should just read, "Not today, yeah. not today." Like, at, at all. Um. Oh my God, I love this book. And the colors. It's so good. The colors so good. take you to these different places. Yes. And like, it's your, it's your, your, your map. Your color palette tells you. Yeah. The emotions. Um. This was okay. So. Oh man, I don't in the cover. I don't. I know. I know. Based on what all when you get there the, and it's. I can't. Uh, I can't. Uh, stupid emotions and human man. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy had such a good plan, right? Such a good plan, man. <sighs> don't trust axe people in suits. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just don't do it. Ah, it's a rule of thumb. Ugh. Okay. Um. So we've got. One. One that's the same one up here. Same up so top. where do you wanna where do you wanna start? Ooh. All right, uh how about you kick us off with war corns? Oh, oh yes indeed I will. Oh, 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 oh. I okay. <clears throat> war corns. <laughs> Written by Garrett Gunn. You are now my idol. Uh art colors and logo design by Kit Wallace. I want to be you when I grow up. Uh lettering and design by Dave Lentz. Well played. Uh, this is produced by SourcePoint Press. I am so envious of everyone that got to work on this book. Um, okay. <clears throat> Warcorns. You've got <laughs> equestrian people. Okay. Right? But the story is they are joining the military. Okay. And there is this terroristic maybe even alien attack and the war corns are gonna have to gear up for war to go handle it <clears throat> now we are spoiler free that is not the way that we get down here we don't do that um however let me just give you a little bit of what are the different core groups that one could join um wait where are you where are you so we've got uh, the war, the war corns. That's one, yeah. obviously. Um, there's the Pegasus Corps. Okay. Uh, or you could be a workhorse, right? So it's probably like workhorse or grunts. Pegasus Corps is like the Air Force. We're not gonna. I mean, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, and the, but the war corns division are like super hardcore. Um, first, I mean, this art, yeah, is it's it's cartoonish. But perfect. Like it's it's Tank Girl meets yes. Like all the yes. It's yeah. so smart, uh economic art. I love it. Gives me a real like I hate Fairyland vibe. Very much so. Which Very is much so. awesome. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Um Yeah, yeah. To be a war corn. Oh my god, that's so amazing. Um buy this book by the dozens it's not really for kids so find like a, a teenage person yeah. that has attitude give it to them and just watch the joy come over their face 
Now, to watch the joy <laughs> leave somebody's face, in a good way, <laughs> the Department of Truth, number five. Oh, my God. All right. So, James Tynan, uh, Martin Simmons. Aye, aye, aye. So, any book that starts off with the Denver International say Airport. It, say it. I'm in. Like, I'm, I'm just in. <laughs> so, by, by this point, you've probably heard what the, the, the basis of this story yes. is that yes. if enough people believe in a conspiracy theory – it actually becomes reality. Yes. And Department of Truth are people that are trying to prevent mm-hmm. these alternate realities from taking over. In this issue, <laughs> we get reptoids. and Which you already know. Yeah, like if you haven't followed my blog, it's... <laughs> Reptoid mania. Mm-hmm. Ryan's reptoids. Yeah. Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so in this, we got the reptoids, and but we also have... This and this isn't going to ruin or spoil anything. Yes, a different way of looking at the Department of Truth, a Ooh. different way of understanding what they're doing, mm-hmm. and not from their perspective either. It's from the outside. Mm, well, inside, outside, mm, from over. Okay, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You got to turn right. the sock inside out. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's still a sock. But it's still a sock. And it makes you like the the entire issue is basically a conversation, and the entire time I'm like, no, wait. Is oh that – oh, gosh. oh, crap. And so James creates this alternate alternate reality, yes. a conspiracy about a conspiracy within a conspiracy. Oh, oh conspiracy X. Yeah. And <clears throat> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, this, this book was like written for me. I Whoever whoever commissioned it, thank you. <laughs> and it's got a reptoid. So. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I worry about James sometimes. Like from this and something's killing children, I'm like there, – Yeah, there's like – Hey, buddy. Does, do we need to send you like a like a candy gram? Hey, listen, or? listen, listen. We've only met like a handful of times, but I'm here for the hugs. Yeah. Okay, you just tell me what you need. Put your head right here, and just just, and just let just, it out. Just man. let it out. Just let it out. Because because <clears throat> this this <laughs> yeah it makes me worry, man. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's warning signs. <laughs> okay. This book is so freaking good. Oh. <clears throat> I almost missed this one because it looks like it was all for polls. <sighs> but luckily, Jeremy had this in his poll. He was like, hey, Vic, did you see this? I'm like, I didn't see it. Oh, yeah, give it to me. Give I got to read. I need Kaiju score. Give it to me. Kaiju score. James Patrick, Rimbro, Brew. Brew? Brew? Yeah. Uh, the Connecticut Bros. Yes. Aftershock. Okay. So it's all love. <clears throat> this is only issue three. Okay. Only issue three. Easy jump one. As the story goes, kaiju are real. They make landfall. There's whole protocols, emergency protocols to deal with this. There's a genius-ish person who decides to plan a heist, very Danny Ocean-like, during a kaiju landfall. Makes sense. supposed to be foolproof. Yeah. The team that he has... Seemingly has some issues. Mm -hmm. You know, some of their plans have gone wrong. Some of them are not who they say they are. Stuff happens. And where last issue ended up, um, a mistake was made. Something that he did not account for. Uh, He was able to detect, uh, you know, due to patterns of fish, things like that, that there was going to be landfall in this place. And it's awesome. What he did not detect is that the, the massive amount of fish equates to two kaiju showing up. Hmm. And that just murders his whole plan <clears throat> because these two kaiju are not friendly to one another. Oh, this is not like a kaiju love call. This is not, you know, kaiju only fans. This is kaiju street fights. And how do you make this plan work? There's a lot of adaptation. There's a lot of things that come to play. But the biggest twist at the end of this one, I should have saw it coming, but I didn't. Oh. And that's good storytelling. That is great storytelling. And now I need issue four right now. Somebody send it to me. I don't even care if it's in script form. I just need it. I just need to read what happens immediately. Please and thank you. Yeah. Because I, I got to know. I got to know how that, how somebody's got to, and I need to know how. All it takes is one email to make come these on. dreams come, come true. Come on. For just one email a day, <laughs> you can feed my dreams. <laughs> Exclusives, exclusive me, please. And this so is, good. This has been optioned, <clears throat> like as op- well it should have. Yeah. 
Oh my god! Like this is dope. This is dope. Okay. All oh right. my god! I don't... Yeah. This is. Oh my gosh! Yeah. This is uh, beautiful. All right. So the creator and the writer, Ian E. Pliskin. The artist's name is Diego Simone. The letter is Ryan Ferrier. The logo design is Podcast. The publisher's name is Behemoth Comics. Oh, Behemoth. The book is The Purple Oblivion. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. All right. So this book is like if you gave the plot outline for John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness to Roger Corman... Oh. And had him and Monster Magnet create a music video. <laughs> it, I can tell you what happens in it, and I it's not going to. Sp- they confirm all of what you just said. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tell you the plot, <clears throat> and it's not going to spoil anything. Nothing. Because the plot is the framework yeah. that the crazy writhes around <laughs> on. All right. So th- this dude gets this business card mm-hmm. for a dominatrix and does what any dude would do and goes to the dominatrix. But what he does not know is that it's actually some kind of cult slash science organization that I think their goal is to create a portal through another human being into an alternate universe. Yeah. That's all no. I absolutely love this book. That's all. all right. This is one that it needs to have like action figures or like the you know the, the stretch Armstrong toys. Oh, there's, yeah, it's... But only parts of them. But only parts, yeah, because when you read it, <laughs> oh, it is, all right, it's so my boy. It's like John dies at the end, I, which I absolutely love that movie in, in, yeah, in that yeah. book. So it's got that vibe to it. The color palette that is chosen. It's so vibrant, man. Like, it, that's... It is, and it's not, which, right, like, really kind of like, if you're just flipping through, you're like, oh, it's kind of, you know, the oh, bright, bright colors and whatnot, yeah. greens and purples. And, like, no, no, the greens are gnarly and nasty. It's so, <laughs> and, and there's a scene where there's, like, the wall. Is it wrong? Does it make me a bad person that I recognized almost every single one of those things? And was like, oh, I really enjoyed watching that when, it, when I, first time I saw it. Yes. I, it, yes it, might, it, it probably does. No, 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 no. It does. It does. Um, own that, though. Like, yeah. embrace it. Like, hug it. Smell it. You're good for yeah. smelling the things. And, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, I highly recommend checking this out. Uh, the Eni Pliskin also did Gatherer, The Firstborns, and Heavy Metal Drummer. Also okay. on Behemoth. And it nice. just, just, oh, my gosh. It's, the story is bonkers. Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it was made to make sense, which makes it even <laughs> more attractive to me. It, yeah. In that says so much more that you are reading and like, yes, I love this. Yeah. <sighs> oh, my gosh. That's what happens. Is that uh, – if maybe maybe this is all an allegory for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Oh. Which, once you read it, that will make sense. Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to talk about the last book. Yeah, that was dank. We had a good one. That was so dank. Um, psych. Speaking of dank, <laughs> Post-Americana, issue two. Oh my God! It needs its own cookbook. Oh my! God. Oh. Okay. So, story and art by Steve Scrooge. Matrix. Steve Scrooge. Okay. Uh, Dave Stewart did the colors, uh, letters, and design by Phonographics. Holy crap! Okay. <laughs> um, I forgot where we had left off in the last issue. It doesn't matter because <laughs> it gets <clears throat> get dragged right back in. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Like it's, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's the first part's patriotic or or just no, no. It's 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 threatening, is what it is. Um, okay, so in this very much so post-apocalyptic world, um, you got factions of people, some that were like living in in this like mountain base where they were the pseudo United States, but had become this horrible military industrial complex that was going to take over the rest of the world. It was bad, right? Like that was bad. Then you had these like pseudo freedom fighters aiming to, you know, stop them from their big assault, which is great. Like, yay. Yeah. All that's in the first issue, which ends with said freedom fighters being surrounded. Yes. By a cannibal cult. This yeah. issue picks up immediately after. Um, and, there are no limit of 
severed, disconnected appendages in this book. Oh my gosh! Yeah, um, the amount of them is it's raw. My, um, my only complaint, yeah, yeah, is that I feel like there should have been a page that was an ad. You're right not here lying because that page turn, yeah, was. <laughs> I mean, it was bad enough when you saw it. It was, but you you skip. You can't help but skip. Yeah. It's not even a game. Like, you're going to skip. Um, actually, there are no ads throughout this whole thing. So yeah. here's a situation where Image Comics notoriously doesn't do that. Yeah. And I think they may they might have needed an ad. Just one. Just one. To make that part work. Because there's a part that you should be turning the page yeah. and going, oh, my God. Yeah. And you don't get to do that. They, they could have reached out to, like, Frank's Red Hot and be like, Pay us twenty dollars, and we will put an ad in Post America. Did you say Frank's Red Hot? I put that on everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Which will make sense when you read the book. Oh. Uh, do you think they even bother with that? I don't know. Do they season? I don't oh, know, man. man. I, got, I got it. That's tough. There's, see, there's your cookbook happening right there in real time. Yeah, because like, did you? <laughs> I don't see any seasoning. I don't either. But how many? Okay. I mean, they're. they're, they're Let not. me ask you this question without spoiling. Did you know that you could use body parts as weapons like this? That's. I had, I had, I had never once thought about that, but it makes kind of sense. It does, doesn't it? Like. Because there would be weight. There right? Would, there would definitely be like a, like a tensile strength yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you think about it, like, well, like in this one, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's the proximity of like a headbutt three times. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, like that. And if I'm just out combing, because w- w- from what we can tell thus far, yeah, outside of the mountain base, yeah, is a wasteland full of crazy and death. So, like, if I saw this, no matter how ba I thought I was, if I saw this dude pause, rolling up, pause, man, like, I got to, nah. I got to be like, I'm not, I'm not going there. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Just let me kill myself. Yeah, and, and yeah. Save like, me the time. Let me just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go die now. And uh, thanks. Oh, um, hints of rosemary. Okay, so they do. Have oh, they do. Them. That's right. That's right. Okay, yeah. so I did see that. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> you're talking cannibals with taste. Yeah. Um, you know that's important, dude. Like. You know, I. Yeah, no, I gotta, I gotta give them their, their, their props. They're not just randomly eating weird things. They yeah. are cooking them. They yeah. are trying to make sure that it's the great circle of life has its. <laughs> <laughs> Waste not, want not, dude. Yeah. Okay, like that's that's how it goes down here. Um, their send off of their beloved friend. Um, extra chew indeed. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, he'd have wanted that. Yeah. <laughs> this, okay. Last week you were talking about a scratch and sniff book. Yeah. I might have to agree with you on this one. This one, it, it, it would smell like the worst. Oh of. my gosh. <laughs> it, yeah. Just, I mean, I, uh, cause I don't think it, like, Nobody bathes. No, yeah, I was gonna say the <laughs> body funk alone yeah. would just be like and choking. Ugh. Body it, funk and putrid death. Um oh, this is so violent, so grindhouse. Oh, it's I so love perfect. the way they there's the, the interplay between the super, super high tech yes. and yes. then just stuff that may have happened in like the old testament like it's, so it's terrible it's oh and i'm trying to figure out where they are <clears throat> and i want to say like based on where they are this is some place that in modern times mm-hmm. would be something really special yeah because like that's like a giant that a swimming giant, pool yeah. or something and i'm really terrified about what this actually is yeah oh and the fact that you can't clean that out, like that's, <laughs> it's, you just just put some dirt on it and move on. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you like, where's Waldo? This you see that it's not just you know eating people. Yeah, there's uh, there's some debauchery. There's uh, some dude can't handle his drink. Like yeah. there's there's some wild stuff to see here in the backgrounds. I want to know what that is. <laughs> 
I didn't even notice what, that one. What, what is that? Like, why is that there? I don't. I don't even know. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, hit, Steve, hit come us up. On. Let us come know. On, what? Man. Like, what, what is, you know what we're talking what about? What is that? Like, why is it there? Like, are you? What do those things like? Are they just? I don't. Eh, we want to know. Um, such a crazy right. mix of books. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we we have what one Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest publisher. That's yeah. everybody else is your indie stuff. Come on, man. Like who's running the comic book industry right now? The indies are man. indies. I just I I this is no diss. This is no diss. Yeah. This is absolutely a challenge. Like Marvel DC, step it up because these guys are coming for you. They are about to be the new normal. And yep. I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. Oh, my God. If this was your first time watching us, please hit that like button because we need to know that you mm -hmm. like what we're giving you because yep. we're giving you that goodness. And if you want more of it, hit subscribe yes. and the bell. Get that notification because mm -hmm. every week we're here yeah. for you reading the stuff so that you read it as well. That's pretty smart. I know, right? I try. That's pretty good. I read that on the back of a milk carton somewhere. I always wanted to be on the back of a milk carton. Life goals, man. Life goals. Life goals.